It's been nearly half a century, but Sarah Weddington can still count the number of states women used to go to get an abortion on one hand. A lot of women went to California. There was a flight every Sunday. Uh, no, it was every Thursday. New York was mostly legal. Um, D.C. was partially legal. Uh, there were a lot of places that you had to know which one to go to and how to get there. She spent much of her early 20s arranging these kinds of trips for women until she took on the nation's highest court to make abortion legal everywhere. The marshal comes out and says, Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay, all ye please rise and face the court. So everybody stands, the curtains behind the bench part, and the judges start walking out. Mrs. Weddington, you may proceed whenever you're ready. Weddington represented Jane Roe in Roe versus Wade. She won seven to two. At the time, she says abortion wasn't a partisan issue. There wasn't an overwhelming response to the decision. Times have changed. Abortion bans have got to go. Well, you just had a big group of Republicans in the legislature and other places who were very determinedly pro-choice. And now, I don't know if you could find any really important person in the Texas Capitol uh, that's Republican and pro-choice. As state bills limiting abortion pass across America, Weddington says what she's seeing reminds her of the time before her landmark case. Before Roe, you had a lot of effort going into trying to help women get to places where they could have a legal abortion. That's what you're seeing today. Back then, you saw doctors being afraid. One of the plaintiffs in Roe versus Wade was a doctor. Now you have doctors worried because several of those bills would sentence them to 99 years in jail. And so there are just lots of similarities. She says she doesn't believe that these bills passed by predominantly white men are representative of people's true feelings on the issue. A Newsy poll found more than six in ten Republicans want to overturn Roe versus Wade, while almost all Democrats want to keep it intact. I think the opponents are going way too far. I think there's going to be a real reaction to what they have suggested the law ought to be. And uh, frankly, I hope there'll be such a reaction because I think it'll help us win and them lose. But she does say the new polarization and the makeup of the court worries her. Senator, I um, said that it's settled as a precedent of the Supreme Court entitled to respect under principles of stare decisis. And one of the important things to keep in mind about Roe v. Wade is that it has been reaffirmed many times over the past uh, 45 years. Well, I don't believe him a bit. I think he would do whatever he needed to do uh, to try to overturn Roe. She wants the justices to respect two things, privacy and precedent. There is a right of privacy. It may not be spelled out word by word, but the concept that people in the U.S. have a right to make their own decisions is very much there. But some don't want to leave it up to the courts. Nearly every 2020 Democratic candidate supports codifying Roe into law, something Weddington herself tried to do before her case was decided. At the time, she was also a member of the Texas legislature. Once Roe versus Wade was decided, then everybody said, well, we don't need that law now. And so we didn't keep focusing on it. Now maybe we should have. Weddington says pro-choice people must pay attention during elections. It's very important for us to have pro-choice people in the legislature, on the courts, and in a lot of places. Texas is one example. You have the judges elected, and so how who gets elected is really important. And then if you look nationally, the justices don't get elected, they get appointed. But that means who's president, who holds other top positions becomes very important. She says now is the turning point for women who thought this was a done deal to realize it's not. I think a lot of them take for granted the rights that we won. Um, but I think there are a lot of them that are really waking up.